Hello friends, Techman Pat. The day has finally come for me. Fiber to the premises. I have finally got NBN to install fiber at my home. It's been a long journey. I wanna share that with you. I wanna share with you the actual installation process, some of the tips and tricks and information that I learned from the installer who was absolutely fantastic. And I know, I know what you're gonna say. There's a few installers out there who aren't great and we'll talk about that too. But I wanna give you some information about how the installation went for me, some tips and tricks for when it happens to you, and of course, just an interesting video. Huge thanks to TP-Link, who have sent me this router to use with my NBN. I am so excited to be using this. I could not think of any other router to use for a fiber connection. Well, if you wanna see the full review, check the links below. Of course, make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started by rolling the intro. Let's start at the beginning where you would check what kind of technology your address has. And this website by Look Prior is a much better resource than any of NBN Co's ones. So in here, type in your suburb, we'll go with Cardinia. Cardinia in Western Australia has a lot of red dots, yellow and green, and some of them are light green. Let's have a quick look at what this actually means. If we zoom into this area right here on Atwell Court, we've got some red, we've got some green and some dark green. So when we click on the red, it says here that 6 Atwell Court, Cardinia, current technology was fiber to the node. Tech change status is the committed, so fiber to the premises is coming at the moment in demand N2P, which means that you cannot get an upgrade at this address. On the other side of the street though, if you're on the light green section, you can get eligible to order fiber to the premises. You can upgrade. And next door right here already has upgraded. So you can use this website to check your address and see where you are in the process. And orange, well, that means HFC technology. Now I kept checking this pretty much daily leading up to the day and we'll go through some of that process now. It's the 8th of July and uh, I just had an NBN tech a subcontractor out the front of my house in a pit and I thought it'd be worthwhile running up and asking where we're at. So he said the work is done. The actual fiber cable is pulled into the street and now in the next week or two, they'll submit paperwork to NBN. Then hopefully a month later, once it gets updated in the system, I'll be able to contact my service provider and request an installation date. Unfortunately, that was not the case and the contractor was being very optimistic. Today, a Fulton Hogan truck came to my pit. I didn't go out and talk to them. They only spent like five minutes there and then they drove off. Now, if we navigate to upgrade NBN's full fiber website where you can type in your address at the time of checking this, it actually popped up and said it's in the build process and is due for completion in December, 2024. So the fact that I got that installation much earlier is I guess a testament to their estimation. And time, you may have seen the lawn tail name gently kicked around on this channel a few times, but I finally made the swap. My NBN connection is now now serviced by Lawntel and I'm going to happily recommend it to you. I've been absolutely stoked with the performance thus far. So if you're looking for a very flexible, fast, low ping for all that gaming goodness NBN supplier with great customer service and not one of the big players who see you as a number, then check out Lawntel. Use the code TECHMANPAT below to sign up and you'll get a $25 credit on your account. And your NBN connection will be swapped within a few hours with absolutely no hassle. Lawntel is flexible with no lock in contracts with plenty of features for the techie folks out there. So check the links below. Thanks and back to the video. Then on the 10th of September, 2024, I logged into my Lawntel account and I saw this, meaning that, hey, Actually, on the 16th of September, I'm gonna be upgrading. But that was not meant to be. Let's go through the actual process of upgrading and excuse the terrible microphone. Okay, today is the 19th of September, 2024, and I can finally go in and request a fiber upgrade through my provider, Lawntel. So we're gonna go navigate to the fiber upgrades page, and that should take us here. Now, when I used to put my address in here, it would pop up and say it's available from the 16th 
of September. But I tried it obviously on the 17th, the 18th, and only today does it start to work. So I'm gonna put in my address, obviously I'm gonna blur that out, and great, looks like we can upgrade you to fiber connection. I'm gonna click, click get started, and then it's gonna take me to the plans below. Now I'm gonna to go to the highest one plausible, $6.40 per day. I don't know, that's a lot, $192, wow. Do I need that much? You know what, I'm gonna do it for one month. Who cares? This is all for fun. <laughs> Choose option, one gigabit. <laughs> Phone number, okay, let's connect. There we go, confirm. Okay, a manual request has been sent. One hour later. Well, only about an hour later, I get a call from Lawntel telling me that there is availability for an install the next day. And so I pick the earliest time on the Friday, the 20th of September to install. And after that call, minutes later, NBN Co themselves send me an SMS to confirm the appointment. Then on the 20th of September, the day of the install, the NBN technician actually calls me and says they are coming in much earlier than the time allotted Allotted, which was fine with me, and I get this SMS from them. Okay, today is the day NBN is coming around to install my fiber. Now they have let me know a window between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. and I'm gonna do a quick run through of where I think the fiber is versus where they're actually gonna drag it from. Okay, this pit in front of my house has about eight fiber optic end points. They are running from the other side of the street just from this one right here. Now that is the point where all the trucks have been working on, pulling it through down the street into this pit and into my pit right here. We'll have a look inside in a moment once the technician gets here, but that runs all the way to the house and that brings through the current copper cable into my home. So at the moment it runs up into the roof space and then goes into my modem in a cupboard. What I want them to do is actually run this through here and to the wall to the right here, where on the other side is my office, where I'll be putting in my NBN modem. Because of that, I think this should be a really quick and easy job for the NBN technician. Okay, let's have a look at the installation process. The technician confirmed the location and installation of both the utility box and the NTD. He got me to sign a PDF on his phone and that's really where the installation gets started. I won't go into too much details of specifics, but the gentleman started with opening the pit, taking out the endpoints and testing one of them to make sure they're working back from the node. Next step was to run a very thick plastic guide wire to pull through the fiber optic cable to the location of the NBN Co utility box that has the fiber going in and another fiber will be connecting to that to the actual NDT inside the house. Now, according to the technician, this process is generally the most difficult part. You don't know the quality of the conduit between the pit and the home and how much it's degraded over time. And in my case, it was a little bit degraded and there must've been dirt and sand and just crap in there because he couldn't get the guide wire through. So he went, and used a classic trick of putting water down the conduit, which did the trick. Once the guide wire was through, the technician was able to pull the fiber optic cable to the utility box via the conduit. Next step was for the utility box to be installed onto the wall and the incoming fiber to be terminated in this utility box that will be then welded onto the next fiber optic cable into the home, into the internet modem. Now I said weld, which is actually a unique part of today's installation. Usually the fiber optic cables get clipped together. More on that later. Next, the technician went inside the home to pull through the actual fiber optic cable by drilling a fairly large hole in the wall. Pulling through the fiber optic cable was very simple because it was just on the other side of the wall. So it only took a few seconds. And once it was through, the technician can start installing the NTD motor mount onto that wall. The NTD or modem as most people know it requires a power brick and a power point that sits just to the right hand side of this wall. Uh, the modem is mounted inside, it is a separate device and it hangs on the wall while on the bottom of the modem you have your ethernet ports to connect your router. And that's it, the NTD is installed, the fiber optic cable is run through and connected to the device. The device now has power and it's ready to go. Once the installation is finished, the technician again takes out the same PDF form 
goes to the next section, takes a photo of both the utility box and the NTD installation and gets me to sign it off. So during the installation, the installer was absolutely fantastic. And not only that, he was accommodating to me asking questions and he gave me so much useful tidbits about the process and about the background of these upgrades. And I wanna share some of these with you. First of all, the thing that he pointed out, and it's a fairly new thing that NBN has brought in, is that people got upset where the NBN installers put the new NTD, the little modem, where they installed it, which part of the wall, which part of the home. So what they had to start doing is setting up a form where they take a photo or where it's going to go, the customer signs it off and says, I'm happy for that modem to go there. And then at the end, once it's installed, they also sign off that they're happy the way it's been installed and the location again. Basically two signatures to make sure there is no going back and forth. Because he said that a lot of people would call up NBN Co. a couple of weeks later and says, I didn't want it there. I want it removed. I want it moved. Now it's not a small box. Like it does take up space. It does need a PowerPoint. So I get how its location is quite important to the homeowner. Now, of course, if they do come out, they will charge you to move that. That's literally work that they have to pay a contractor to do. But the first time you install it, there's a couple of tidbits that he mentioned that would help you if you are installing it. Now, the hardest part for the installer is the roof. They're not allowed to be on top of the roof and they can only squat inside the roof space. They're not allowed to crawl. So they can only move the cable from the entry point to another location by around 12 meters. So wherever location you need to place it in, it needs to be indoors, obviously. It cannot be in any wet areas and it has to be next to a power point. And so this becomes quite problematic for certain home structures that don't have that space very close by or it's an inconvenient place to put that modem in. What he did suggest is that if a customer has a 20 millimeter conduit placed inside their home from that location to where they would like to go, they can do up to 40 meters in that. And that's because if the conduit's nicely done, he can just push the little rip cord through and pull through the fiber cable to the modem. Most people have been putting it in garages, which tends to be the closest location to where the actual underground cable comes up. And that might be a solution for many. Now my installation was very simple. Where it enters into the home, I wanted it on the other side, right behind me in my home office. And so it wasn't really a problem. Maybe in the future, if this house ever gets sold and this becomes a bedroom, then that might be quite problematic for that person and they'll have to move it. But for me, for now, this is the perfect spot. Now there's been a lot of comments from people online and on forums that some installers that are contracted by NBN are not great. And the installer that helped me with it, I did ask that question, what's going on with the feedback that some customers are giving? And he told me a couple of stories and I guess a couple of examples of installers just doing absolutely terrible jobs and leaving things undone and other installers having to come back and fix those problems. Now, that's neither here nor there. There's a lot of trades out there that do terrible jobs. Obviously, the NBN is under a bit of a microscope and it's a public service, so there's an expectation of service quality. But like with anything, there are average jobs and then there are better people who do better jobs. Some of the things that were done is just shoddy work where things weren't straight or connected properly and people had to come back and fix it all. It just wasn't followed to the book or to the letter that NBN has set out for their contractors to do. It's just part of life that these, I guess, installers sometimes do a shoddy job on a Friday at 5 p.m. and they just wanna get home. Now, that's not all of them. He did say that a majority of the installers are absolutely fine, the job gets done, and the customer gets their fiber to the internet. I really can't comment. My installer was probably one of the most professional people I met. Not only that, he went above and beyond to make sure everything looked really nice outside and inside. He cleaned up after himself, and the process was absolutely smooth. One of the things that he did that was above and beyond, but not necessarily necessary, is when connecting the fiber points from the outside to inside. There's a fiber end point that you clip in to another fiber cable, then that goes to a modem outside. Now, the standard NBN installation is to just clip them together. 
However, he suggested welding is a much better process, but takes a little bit more, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes longer, but it does provide a more solid connection between the two fibers as they join. However, not all installers have the tool set to do a fiber weld. And that is because NBN doesn't provide that. They provide a clip-in system that clips the two fiber cables together. But this gentleman was very passionate about his job and he does other work on the side and he had one of these tools to weld fiber optic cables together. And he did say that it is actually a pretty difficult process sometimes to get right when you're working outside, there's lots of dust, but it does provide a better connection, not from a performance point of view, but longevity. And of course, it means there's less issues when the fiber is actually welded together. So my suggestion to you when getting your fiber installed is find the place where you believe that box, that modem is gonna be able to go long-term and make sure that there is a power point there. Now, that may mean that you might need to get an electrician to put a power point in, and that might have to go to you as the customer's cost. That's unfortunate, but you are getting the fiber installed technically for free through your taxes through the NBN. So here is my network setup. We have the BE800 from TP-Link right here. There is a black ethernet cable CAT6 connected from the modem right underneath this table into a router. From there on in, it gets split out to my TP-Link mesh system, the server, the computer right here, and another network in a cupboard. And that network takes care of things like Apple TVs and TVs to get internet connection to them that's fairly stable. All the mobile devices are on the mesh network and the BE800 is Wi-Fi 7. So you may be wondering, is the RSP provided router enough for you? And in most cases it is because the modem underneath the table from NBN Co called the NTD is doing most of the work to get internet into your home. After that, the router is just distributing that internet across your devices at home. So if the Wi-Fi performance of your RSP provided router is not enough, that's the moment when you need to upgrade to something else. And of course, the upgrade will depend on what you need. So uh, check my channel below. There's a couple of reviews of different routers that will help you. You no longer need a modem when having a fiber to the premises NDT installed in your home. So big thanks to TP-Link for sending the BE800 to run my fiber connection. I I'm so happy that this is the system I'm using right now because I do have a whole gigabit coming through into the house from the fiber connection and then using the 10 gigabit port right here, it is then being split apart to all the servers, computers, TVs and gaming devices seamlessly and easily. Not only that, it has Wi-Fi 7 for the entire house which I'm gonna love when I continue testing Wi-Fi 7 devices in the next couple of years. So friends, I hope this video helped you to understand how the installation process goes. And of course, if you have any questions, please note them down below. I'll absolutely continue making videos about everything to do with tech and telco in Australia. Nothing's changed except that my videos will be uploaded much quicker. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel as long as you guys have. And to any new people, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.